Hi everyone, my name is Milan and today I'm going to show you how you can build a CI-CD pipeline from scratch. We're going to be using GitHub Actions to deploy our .NET 6 web API to Azure where it's going to be running inside of an Azure App Service instance. So let's dive straight into the code and see how we can make this happen. I already prepared a .NET 6 minimal API that we are going to be deploying to Azure through GitHub Actions. But first, let's see what I actually have inside of our web API. I'm configuring Swagger at the start, and we're going to be using that as the interface for our API. I'm going to remove this check to only add Swagger in development, because I want it to be running when we deploy our API to Azure. I only defined one minimal API endpoint, and all this endpoint does is it returns the current UTC time. I'm going to run the application and quickly show you that what we have here is actually working. So we are inside of our Swagger UI where we have only one endpoint that returns the current UTC time. And when I execute it, we get the current UTC time in the response body. If I keep executing it again and again, you're going to see that the time is updating. So now I want to focus on adding our CI CD pipeline using GitHub Actions and then we're going to deal with deploying our API to Azure. I'm in the GitHub repository of our current time service, and I'm going to add a GitHub action from this UI. If you go to the Actions tab, you will get access to a bunch of pre-configured GitHub actions. If you add this one, it's going to include build and test steps for your .NET application. Another one that could be interesting is deploying your container to an Azure web app but we're going to build our pipeline ourselves. So I'm going to click here to set up a workflow on my own. So let's see how we can define a GitHub action to publish our web API to Azure. First, I'm going to give our action a name. I'm going to call it publish and I'm going to add an emoji because I think it's pretty cool when you can add a rocket to your GitHub action. We need to define a trigger for our action. So I'm going to add two triggers. One is going to be workflow dispatch, and this is going to allow me to run my action manually on demand. And I also want to run my action whenever a push happens, and I can specify which branches I want the action to trigger on. And I'm going to say, I only want you to run the action when there's a push to the main branch. Now I need to define the next section, which is the jobs. This is going to be our actual pipeline. I need to give it a name, for example, publish, and now I need to define our publish job. First, I want to say where I want this job to run in terms of the operating system. I'm going to specify the latest Ubuntu version as the operating system where I want our GitHub action to execute. And now I need to define a list of steps to get our application built and published to Azure. Now I want to set up our .NET environment. So I'm going to make a named step, which is going to be setup.net. It's going to use an existing action, which is going to be setup.net, and I'm going to use version 3 of this action, and I need to specify which .NET version I want to use. I'm going to say I want to use the version 6.0.x, where x is the wildcard and resolves to the latest version. Now that I have our .NET version set up, we want to restore our application, so I'm going to create another step, which is going to be restore, and I want to use the run argument here because I want to execute my custom action. So I'm going to say .NET restore and specify the path to our solution file, which is going to be current time service dot SLN. And this will take care of restoring our application. Now that we have our application restored, we want to build it. So I'm going to run .NET build and specify the same path to our solution. So current time service dot sln and i want to specify the configuration for the build i want to build in the release configuration and i'm also going to specify the no restore argument because i have just restored the application in the previous step so we have the restore step the build step and now i want to publish our action so i'm going to add a new step which is going to be publish and in the run we want to call dot net publish specify the path to our solution file, current time service .sln. We want to publish in the release configuration and we're going to specify no build as the argument because we have already built the application in the previous step. 
So this is looking good so far. I think we are ready to commit our GitHub action and see if it is actually working. I'm going to commit it through the UI here and we're going to go to the actions tab and see our action running. So I'm inside of the action that is running right now. You can see that the restore step has completed, the build step completed successfully and the publish step completed, completing our GitHub action. So the YAML file that we just defined worked properly and you can reuse this same GitHub action for any .NET Web API. To show you that this is actually triggering whenever I commit something to the main branch, I'm going to move to our application and here I'm just going to add a simple comment so that we have something to commit. So I'm going to say get UTC to describe the endpoint that we are defining in this line. Let's go ahead and commit this change and you'll see that this is going to trigger our action on GitHub. So I'm using GitHub Actions as my Git GUI and I'm going to commit our comment and push it to GitHub and this is going to trigger our action. Now I'm going to move to GitHub and in the Actions tab you can see that we have our latest commit. It is now running. If I go inside we're going to see the publish action executing. As you can see, our action completed in 20 seconds, which is pretty fast. Usually you want to add another step between build and publish, which is going to run your automated tests. But I'm going to leave that for a separate video where I'm going to show you how to run your unit tests, generate a code coverage report and publish that to some service that allows you to store and view your code coverage results. So be on the lookout for that. Now that we have our GitHub action configured and running, we want to set up our Azure app service. So I'm going to head over to Azure where we're going to create our app service instance. So I'm here in Azure and I want to create an Azure app service where we're going to run our web API. I already prepared a resource group where our Azure app service is going to live. I'm going to specify a name for our service. I'm going to try to come up with something with current time service. We're actually lucky and this isn't taken. I'm going to use code as our publish. The runtime stack is .NET 6. We want to be running on Linux and let's say in the central US. I want to change the plan for our app service to be a free instance so that we don't track up any costs while testing this. And I think we can go to the review and create step. So whenever you're creating a service on Azure, make sure that you carefully review what you're doing. So again, we are using a free Azure app service instance. We called it current time service and we need to remember this name because we're going to use it later for deployment. It's going to be running on a Linux machine somewhere in the central US. So let's create this instance. And this is going to take some time, so be patient when you're trying this out at home. So here's our Azure App Service that I just created. This is the URL where you can find our application. And if I go to that URL, we are going to be met with a dummy application that Azure prepares for us. But we're going to replace that with our actual Swagger UI when we configure deployment for our application. What I need from our Azure App Service is this published profile here. We're going to be using that to configure our GitHub action to deploy our code to this Azure App Service instance. So I'm going to download the published profile, which is just an XML file. And now we're going to update our GitHub action to use this published profile to deploy our application. I'm back in GitHub and I'm editing our GitHub action to add the deployment step to Azure. And we already have an action from Azure that we can use for configuring the deployment. So I'm going to create a new step here and call it deployment. And the action that we are going to use is the web apps deploy action. So I'm going to specify it here, web apps slash deploy. And I'm going to use the version two, which is the latest version. And we need to specify a few arguments here so that our deployment works correctly. First, we need to specify the name of our application and the argument is app name. I'm going to leave it empty for just a moment. Then we want to specify the published profile. I'm going to add that. And the last part that we need is the package, 
which is going to be the location where our application is actually published. So if you recall from a moment ago, where we created our Azure App Service, we called it current time service. So I'm going to specify that here. A better approach would probably be to create an environment variable. And I'm going to show you now how you can do that. So right before defining the jobs, I'm going to define a few environment variables. The first variable that we're going to define is the Azure Web App name. And I'm going to give it the value of current time service. Then I'm going to create a new one, which is going to be the path where our application is going to be published. I'm going to call it Azure Web App Package Path. And I'm going to give it a value of publish. So let's use these environment variables in our pipeline. So how we can specify our environment variable here is like this. We're also going to do the same for our package path. And we shouldn't forget to specify this in the previous step where we actually publish our application. So I'm going to add the output argument and use the environment variable that we just defined above. So I want our application to be published to the path that I specified here. And I'm using that same path here in the deployment step. And the last missing piece of the puzzle is our published profile. You should never expose this in your GitHub action because this would be leaking sensitive information in your code. So how do you keep this value secret? while being able to use it inside of your GitHub action. Before I give you the answer, I'm going to need you to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel to give me the strength to complete this video and get our application published and running on Azure. So GitHub has a way for us to store sensitive information inside of GitHub secrets. I'm going to open the settings tab in a new browser tab and if you take a look at the menu here, we have a secrets dropdown and we want to define a new secret for our GitHub action. I'm going to click the new repository secret and I'm going to place our published profile inside of a secret. I'm going to name the secret Azure Published Profile and as the secret value, I'm going to paste in the published profile that I downloaded from the Azure App Service dashboard. So I created the action and you can see it here. I called it Azure Publish Profile, and we can access it as an environment variable inside of our GitHub Actions. We are back in our YAML file, and we just need to specify the Publish Profile. We're going to do that by accessing the secrets and accessing the Azure Publish Profile secret, which I just created. This completes the deployment step for our pipeline, and I'm going to commit this and run our pipeline. And hopefully this is going to get our application published on Azure. You can see that our updated GitHub action completed successfully. We managed to build and publish our web API and we properly configured our deployment step to publish our action to Azure App Service. To be able to do that, we use the publish profile that we downloaded from the Azure App Service dashboard and we stored it as a GitHub secret which we used in the deployment step to be able to authorize our deployment. I'm back in Azure and I'm going to open up our website again and I'm going to visit the Swagger URL. So you can see that our web application is live and running on Azure. If you made it this far into the video, I want to congratulate you for sticking with me because now we're going to fire our first request to the API and hopefully we're going to get back our response. And indeed, we do get the current UTC time. Let's fire it a few more times to be sure that it's working. I hope that you enjoyed this video of setting up a CI-CD pipeline from scratch. I usually only share the code with my Patreon supporters, but this time I'm going to make the repository open source and available to everyone. I'm going to leave the link to the repository in the description of this video but still consider supporting me on Patreon because creating these videos is a lot of work and every new Patreon gets me one step closer to becoming a content creator full-time. Make sure that you take a look at these two videos that I prepared for you and until next time, stay awesome.